In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the calendar feature in System.io. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to use the calendar feature and how to get it set up. Then I'll show you how to integrate your calendar with Zoom or Google Meet or any other video conferencing platform that you might want to use. I'll then show you how to embed your calendar onto a funnel page or website page so you can then get it in front of the right people. And I'm also going to show you how to connect your calendar with the pipeline feature in System.io. So once a person books a meeting with you, they'll automatically be added to a particular stage of your pipeline as well to help you easily manage your contacts and leads. So this system.io calendar feature tutorial is pretty much going to show you everything you need to know to get the calendar up and running and integrated seamlessly with your business. Now, if you're currently using the free plan of system.io, then you can use the calendar feature on the free plan. But if you're at that stage in your business when you're ready to upgrade to a paid plan of system.io, then you can get 40% off of your system.io account via the link in the description below this video. Now let's get into the tutorial and I'll show you how to use the calendar feature in system.io. Okay, so here we are in system.io and underneath the calendar tab, of course, it's going to bring you here to the calendar feature. And on this page, you're going to see three tabs, which are events, bookings, and availability here in the top left corner. So under the events tab, you're going to see any events that you've already set up. So I've currently set up a test event here, just been playing around with it. But if this is the first time you've used the calendar feature, then you're not going to see anything yet listed here at all. Then under the bookings tab, we're going to see any bookings that we currently have set up. And the third tab is availability, which allows you to set up default times for your meetings. So if, for example, as a general rule, you're available at certain times on a weekly basis, then you can set that up here. So then when you come to set up individual calendars and events, you can select your default availability with one click just to make it nice and easy for you. However, that said, even with this set up, you can also set up custom availability times and dates for different calendars and different events as you go as well, if you want to do that. So I do recommend you come in here first, just set this up under availability. So this is ready to use as and when you need it. And don't worry, this is going to all make sense in the next couple of steps of the video. So as an example, in order to set up any of these default availability, so I've set it up for Monday to Friday. But let's just say, for example, you were going to set one up for Saturday as well. You would click the check mark to activate the day so people will then be able to book in with you on a Saturday. Then you need to select which time you want to make yourself available for on that particular day. So let's just say we're going to choose 11 a.m. Let's go for 11 a.m. until 1.15. And if that's the only time slot for the day, then you're done. You're good to go. If, however, you want to have like a break for lunch and then add another time slot like I've done here on some of these other days, all you do is click add time slot and you get a second option here. So let's say... The second time slots will be from 2.30 to, say, 6 p.m. OK, so then you made your gap for lunch. So that's basically how you do that. Very simple. And then once you set this up, you need to come up to the top right here and click on the save button. But I'm just going to delete this for now because I don't want to have Saturday's availability. And now with that set up, let's go and set up our first event. So come to the events tab at the top left here. And then we need to head over to the right hand side and click on create new event. And now here is where we can start set up our event. So the first thing is to name our event. So I'm going to call this uh, YouTube calendar test just so it's very clear that we know what this event is about. That'll just make it easier for you guys to follow along with this tutorial. And then on the right hand side, you can select the duration of your meetings. Let's just go for 60 minutes. And if you want to, you can add your photos by clicking on here and then uploading your photo. Host name is going to be set by default, whatever name is on your system or account. But of course, you can change this here very easily. And then the meeting locations, so you've got three options. You've got online meeting, telephone or in person. So for online meeting, if we click this, We've got two options. The first option is Zoom. Now, currently this is grayed out because if you want to use Zoom with System.io, then you have to integrate the two together. And now System.io does have a native integration with Zoom, which I'm going to show you how to connect in just a minute. But before we do that, the other option we have here is external link. So basically anything else, any other platform, video conferencing platform that's not Zoom. So if you want to use Google Meet or whatever, you can put that link in here. So just to show you what that looks like, let's go to my Gmail account and come to Google Meet. So in the top right, we've got the dots icon, scroll down and we'll find Google Meet. And now here we have the option to create a new meeting. I'm going to create a meeting for later, choose this option. And now here, Google Meet has generated us a URL where our meeting will be held. So I'm just going to copy this link. Come back to system.io and paste that link in here and then click save. And that's set up. Simple as that. Now, alternatively, if you want it to be a phone meeting, then you select this option. And by default, whatever phone number is on your account in system.io will automatically be in here by default. We can easily change this just by deleting what's ever in here and put the right phone number in that you want to use for the meeting. 
and personal on this option here is where you're going to enter the address so if you're meeting someone at a particular venue then you just put the address in here and you can also put your phone number in so the person can contact you just in case you get lost or something like that now before we move on i'm going to show you how to integrate zoom so if you wanted to use zoom here for your online meeting instead of google meet or any other platform what we need to do first of all is we need to come out of this calendar page and head over to the top right and select settings from the menu here and then in settings on the left hand side we'll see this option here that says zoom integration so for example i'm already logged into my zoom here so now all i need to do is click on the connect zoom button a pop-up window will appear so it accepts the permissions click allow and you're good to go simple as that so now if we head back to the calendar we can now enter Zoom for our meeting location. So because I didn't save that previous event, I'm just going to set that up one more time. So let's go to create new event. So enter the name for our event and you're going to choose the time, that's 60 minutes. And now when we go to online meeting, we're going to have the Zoom option is available to us and it's going to be ticked by default. Now, just because you've got Zoom integrated doesn't mean you can't use any other video conferencing platform for any other specific meetings if you wanted to. You absolutely can. All you do is just click on external link and now you've got both options. So we can do the external link option for Google Meet or any other platform, or just check Zoom if you want to use your Zoom integration. So we're gonna go with Zoom and let's click save. And now we need to just write a little description to let people know what our meeting's about. Now this will be displayed to our attendees in the email that they will receive automatically at the time when they sign up for your meeting. So let me just write something in here. This is a one-to-one -one meeting with Steve to discuss your goals. So I'll just read that out to you just so when I show you a little bit later on in the video and I show you the email that your meeting attendees will receive once they sign up for your meeting. So that will just show you guys exactly where your meeting attendees are going to see this message. Anyway, continuing on. Now with availability, this is a section here where we've got available hours Use global availability. Now, this is what we set up earlier underneath the availability page, which is generally your default availability options for your meetings. So if you want to use that, then you just make sure this is toggled on, which will be done by default if you've already set up your default availability, like I showed you at the beginning of the video. Now, if you didn't want to do that, if you wanted to set up very specific times just for this specific meeting only, then you just switch this off and then you just select here which time slots you want to offer for this specific meeting. So if this is just a one-off meeting and you want to really streamline the times you're offering, just select your times here. Let's say it's going to be 4.15 till 6.30. That's the time slot within which a person can book an appointment with you. And let's just give them another option here, say 4 p.m. and say 8 p.m. on this day. Okay. So then for this particular meeting, they'll only be able to book their 60 minute time slot within these time zones you've set here. Now I'm just going to put it back to our global settings just for this example and moving on to the next step. Oh, I forgot to show you date range. So just at the top here, selecting the calendar from this option here is where you can select how long this meeting will be active for. So if I clear all and select again, so choose today's date and then I'm going to choose it a few months. We'll run it for a few months into the future up to the 31st of May and then click apply. And now following weekly time slots will be available this particular type of meeting between this date range. Anyway, moving on, now we've got the option to select time increments. So for example, if you want to be able to give time slot options every 15 minutes, choose 15 minutes here, and then your attendees will have options like this. For example, they can book at nine o'clock or 9.15 or 9.30 and so on. And the daily limit, this is the number of meetings that people will be allowed to book with you in a day. So if you didn't want to have more than I don't know, five meetings in a day. If that was your cutoff, that's when you're just, you've just had enough of talking to people. You just put five in here. And then if you get five bookings in one given day, then system.io will not allow anyone else to book a meeting with you in that day. And now here we have buffer time. So if you wanted a bit of space between each meeting, just you haven't got back-to-back -back meetings, perhaps you want to have 15 minutes to grab a cup of coffee or use a bathroom or whatever. So here you can select buffer time before and after the event. So let's say we've got 10 minutes before and after. And now here by default, with this option checked, System.io will automatically detect and show the times to your attendees in their time zone. Then once you're happy with this, click save and preview. So now this is what your calendar is going to look like. And it's quite similar to what it looks like in a platform like Calendarly, for example. Attendees will see the event name, the duration, the location. So we select Zoom, time zone, and up here they can toggle across the different weeks and see your availability. So if you click on any of given day, now here we can see the time slots that were available at 15 minute intervals because that's what we set up. So let's close on this. And now that is our second event here set up, YouTube calendar test. Okay, so now your calendar is set up. Let me show you how to add your calendar to a page in your funnel or your website, for example, so you can then get it in front of the right people. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to head out of the calendar page and we're going to go to sales funnels. And I'm going to show you how to connect the calendar to a particular page with it in a sales funnel. And it'll be the same steps if you're doing this for a website. So I'm going to choose funnel here, test sales funnel, and I've got multiple pages already set up on this funnel. But when it comes to adding the calendar, so the first thing we want to do is come down to the bottom and click on this button that says add step. Now here, we're just going to name this as calendar page. And under type, when it comes to types of pages you could choose, you're going to need to select the squeeze page option. So you won't be able to add the calendar to any of the other types of pages. Click on save. Now, currently the calendar page is at the bottom here. But of course, we can drag and drop and reorder that wherever we want it to be. So for example, if you're charging a fee to have a meeting with you, then you could drag this up underneath the order form. So once the order is placed on the order form, they're then redirected after purchase to your calendar page where they can book an appointment. Just as an example, or if you're running free discovery calls, for example, then of course you wouldn't have the order form page there. Anyway, just for the sake of this example, I'm going to drag that down back to the bottom of our funnel. Now I'm going to select my template. I'm just going to go with this one just for speed. And now we're going to click on edit page on the right hand side, come into the page editor. And first thing we're going to do is make a little space to add our calendar. So let's put it right here. So I'm going to come to the left sidebar menu and select a row drag the row into where I want it to be. And now within this box here, I'm going to drag my calendar. So again, on the left hand side, the menu options under the elements, we've got the elements here for calendar. So I'm going to drag that in and drop that into my row. So now here is our calendar. This is what it's going to look like to people who visit this page. So the calendar widget is going to have two steps for people here. So the first step is where they can actually select their time with you. And then the second step is where they can enter their name, email, phone number, if you're collecting it, and then the submit button. So first of all, let's go back to step one of our calendar. So in order to access this, you need to click on your calendar and you'll see the menu bar on the left hand side will change. So we have two options at the top here, which is calendar, which is what we're currently looking at right now. Or the other option here, which is currently gray, is the form. So I click on this. Now we can edit the form itself. So going back to the calendar here under headline is you can add a headline next to step one if you wanted to. If you want to type anything right here and you'll see headline appears here and here is where you can edit the subheading and the button text which is currently on next step to flick the person to step two of the calendar now back in the left sidebar menu here underneath events this is really important so from this drop down this is where you can select which event i.e which calendar you set up and which one you want to select here now the youtube calendar test is the one we're currently working on and select that option here and now we can see the info we set up for this event, i.e. the event name, duration and location, which we selected Zoom for this particular meeting. And now under here, you've got other options like changing the colors and so on. So let's just change it to that for now. So pretty simple. Now, if we go to the form, come over to the left sidebar and select the form option. So here, if you don't want to collect a phone number, for example, you can just delete that right here. I'm just going to put that back in for now. And you can edit everything else at the headline, the subheadline in the sidebar menu here as well. So that's pretty much it. There's not much to do here at this point. So if we click on save changes, and I'll show you what this calendar is going to look like once it's live. So if we click on the little eye icon at the top right here, we're going to see a preview of this page. So currently the page looks like this. And now here is our calendar right here. So it looks pretty nice. So here the visitor can select which day they want to select a meeting with you. And then here they can choose their time and then click on next and they enter their details here and submit. But before we do that, there's a couple of other things that are really important to be aware of in order to get this calendar working smoothly for you. So now at this point, we've got the calendar set up and we've embedded it or connected it to a page in your funnel. So what happens right now at this present moment when a person enters their information and books an appointment with you? Well, what will happen is once they submit that form, they'll instantly receive an email from you with the details of the meeting as well as the Zoom link as well. And something else that's really cool is that System.io will send a second email to your meeting attendees one hour before their scheduled time as a reminder with the Zoom link again. So this is great to help safeguard against people who might forget about your meeting. Now in a sec, I'm going to test out our calendar and show you exactly what your meeting attendees will see when they schedule a meeting with you via your calendar, as well as what the emails will look like that they'll receive from System.io when they book their meeting with you. But before we do that, let me show you how to connect your calendar to your pipeline. So anyone booking a meeting with you via your calendar will automatically be added to a particular stage of your pipeline. And this is going to save you a lot of time, make things much easier for you when it comes to managing your prospects and leads. Okay, now, so before we connect the pipeline to our calendar, let me just go to the pipeline, just show you that I've currently got no one in here at the moment. So I've also added this column here, which is meeting booked. 
So I want to automatically have all my contacts from this specific calendar land right here in this column here. OK, so I'll show you that afterwards after I've opted in. Now, if you don't yet know how to use a pipeline feature or how to set it up, then you can watch this video that I'm showing on my screen right now. That video will show you everything you need to know about the pipeline feature. I've also linked to that video in the description below this video, so it's easy for you to find it. Anyway, with that said, let's go back now to our funnel that we're working on. So it's this test funnel right here. And to connect the pipeline features to the calendar, make sure you've selected the calendar page. Come up to this tab that says Automation Rules. Now here, we're going to select the button Add Rule. And now the trigger we want to select is Funnel Step Form Subscribed. So why Funnel Step Form Subscribed? Let me just quickly show you, if we go back to what our page, our calendar page looks like, the calendar itself has two pages. The page here where they can select their appointment time and then on the form, here is the form. So once this form is submitted, then they will be added to the pipeline. So in order to do that, we've got the calendar page selected. We choose Automation Rules, click on Add Rule. Now the trigger is Funnel Step Form Subscribed. And then the action we want to have occur when someone subscribes to that form is right down the bottom here, add to pipeline. And now here we have a drop down menu and in the drop down menu, we've got each of the stages in our pipeline. And I want meeting booked via this specific calendar to go in the meeting booked column. Click on save rule and you're now set up. So now let's go and test our calendar and make sure everything's working. So let's go back to step configuration and we've got the calendar page selected right here. We're just going to view this funnel step. And so this is what the page looks like. Now here is our calendar. So now let's select a date and time. So I'm just going to choose this one and choose 1215. That would do go to the next step. Now we need to enter our name and email address and then click submit. And now at this point, Ah, OK, so we're seeing this page says thank you. This page is being displayed because there's currently no thank you page to find. Good. This came up, actually, if we go back into our funnel, just so you can see here, the calendar page is the last page of our funnel. So make sure that doesn't happen. All you do is set up a thank you page and have that as the last step, the step after your calendar page. So thank you page right here and then just choose a template, select this one. So now what will happen once a person submits the information on our calendar like we just did. Instead of seeing this horrible page here, they'll be redirected to the thank you page. OK, anyway, that said, so we've submitted our information. What we should now see is that contact first appearing in the pipeline. So if we go to pipeline and here it is. So automatically the contact has been added. And if I open this, you can see a bit more information about the email address, name, location, phone number, and so on about the prospect. Now, the next thing we should see is the email in our inbox. So let's head over to our inbox. And here we go. We see the first one here at the top confirmed YouTube calendar test with Steve West. That was the name we gave to this particular meeting. So if I click on here. Now, this is the email your meeting attendees will see the event, the Zoom link, if you're using Zoom or Google Meet or whatever you're using, and the event description is what we wrote at the very beginning when we set up this event. And then email number two will come one hour before the date of this meeting, which is 12.15 on the 8th of January 2025. So this is in one week's time from today. And now if the time's right for you now to upgrade from a free plan to a paid plan of system.io, then you can save 40% via the link in the description below this video. Now, if you have any questions or if you're stuck with anything with the system.io calendar feature, then feel free to leave me a comment below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Now, if you've got value from this video, then please do like, share and subscribe. It really helps my channel out a lot and I really appreciate it. Now, if you want to know exactly step by step how to use the pipeline feature to manage your leads and prospects in system.io, then this is the next video you're going to want to watch.